Okay, ah, hold on, I think we're here. Well, let me see, are we in here, are we in here? Oops. Okay guys, can you hear me is the most important question. All right, cancel that. Can you guys see, oh, you can't see me. Oh, Miley, you can hear me? Hims, can you hear me as well? Hi, Alexa. Yes, blue, okay, cool, you guys can see me. All right, let me get set up here and we will jump right into it because you guys know that I am not technically, uh, I'm not very savvy here, but I want to watch live. Okay, so I'm gonna do something real quick. Hold on, stay with me. Okay, I want to switch it around. Okay, can you guys see all of us? Can you see the dogs? Scoot back. Okay, here we are. We are here. Ah, I'm so excited. Okay, I'm going to jump into it because I always hate it when I watch a live stream and people are taking forever to get to the point. Welcome to another dog vlog. I'm Rachel Fasaro. If you're new here and I have your guys' live chats here in front of me this time, last time I couldn't see what you guys are chatting and I am so damn thankful. Finn, come say hi. Come say hi, Finn again. They're all here for you. You and Bentley, there you are. Okay, he wants to be the star of the show. What's what's different? Come here, come here. Come on your new bed. I have a new video coming out soon, guys. I'm talking about these beds and I am obsessed. I can't wait to share that with you. But today's video, I'm going to be answering your questions. I am going to be taking some questions here live from the chat, so stay tuned. Keep typing your chats in the chat box. Um, but I did, I did post on the YouTube community section uh, where you guys can post chats almost like Instagram as well as my Instagram and you guys put a ton of questions so I'm gonna quick go through those I'm gonna try to get to as many as I can because your guys's comments on my YouTube videos and your DMs on my Facebook page and Instagram are blowing up and I'm so thankful but I'm not answering them as quickly as I would like and I want to support you guys and give you guys value because I adore every single one of you more than you could ever possibly no, please never, ever, ever forget that. So we're just going to jump into it. I'm going to try to give you guys as much value as possible. And I'm so excited to be hanging out live. Yeah, like, it, yes, guys, this is actually live. Let's give a couple shout outs, though. Lisa, so glad you're here. Sophie, Scoob, I see you here a lot, and I'm so thankful for you. Michaela, Maya, Brooke, and Grace, I see you guys here as well. And very appreciative of your support. Alexa and Annie, Naomi. Nathan, there you are. There's Finley, I love that name as well. Oh my gosh, I can't even keep up. Anna, Maddie, uh, Anna, Nora, Alex. Okay, you guys, seriously, thank you so much for being here. There's over 120 watching and I literally just started. I'm a, a little nervous. Finnegan, come say hi. Come say hi over here. Come over here. There you go, there you go, good boy. And good Bentley. Uh, oh, look at him go in the treat pouch. So I'm gonna go over to my Instagram, and I'm just gonna start up at the top. My Instagram post, my most recent one, uh, I you guys put a ton of questions, so I'm gonna start going down those. I hope that the people that ask these questions end up watching this either now or later. Um, oh, and I do wanna address the elephant in the room, and for those of you who have been following me, this room, although I didn't give you a lot in the background, probably doesn't look very familiar to you, and that's because this is a completely different home I'm very behind on vlogs. I do apologize for that genuinely because I love giving you guys at least one video a week and my goal is two to three a week. Uh, but I have a ton of content coming. Many of you are asking about the new dog that's coming into my life and that new dog comes into my life this week. So I'll give you all the details on that soon. So definitely make sure you're subscribed, turn those notifications on and you guys will also get details where we're at why we have these new beds, why there's this new wall. Huh, we've had a lot of changes in our family. So Leanne asks, uh, I recently got a two-year-old dog, and this is again from my Instagram uh, post titled, Let's Meet Up. Leanne asks, I recently got a two-year-old dog and she doesn't like to go to the bathroom in her backyard, but the second we go on a walk, uh, goes, she goes right away. Is this common? Absolutely. So guys, uh, dogs are like us in the sense that they have sense a lot of sensory in their paw pads, just like humans. I don't know if you knew that. 
and actually putting pressure on the walk and using their nose while they're walking can stimulate their urge to go potty. Uh, for example, Bentley is the exact same way. Uh, again, this is my chocolate lab. If you're new here, he's he turns 11 this year in December. I can't believe it. Um, anytime we go on a walk, hands down, he's going to go number two. It's just kind of become routine and habit for him. But the walking on the paw pads stimulates um, different neurons. His mind, he's like, all right, I'm out. Uh, as you guys know, he's a little bit camera shy. Uh, and also using his nose is kind of stimulating and makes him need to go potty. Finn, on the other hand, hated and still doesn't prefer going potty on leash. So we actually just drove cross country, hint, hint. And I had to work with him a ton leading up to that trip to get him used to going potty on leash because we weren't going to have access to a fenced grass backyard for a while. So he's gotten there, but yeah, it's a lot of its personality as well. So that is something you can do. What you can do is kind of go back to potty training 101. If you want to get your dog to really go potty in the backyard and just reward them when they go, because eventually they will. But to me, there's nothing wrong with them going potty on a walk as long as you pick up after them. Uh, next, I'm gonna make sure you guys can still hear me. Oh my goodness, you guys, look at all these comments. There's 138 of you watching right now. Eek, I'm a little nervous. Guys, tell me if I'm doing okay. Uh, and I am on my cell phone. I wanna figure out how to live stream on my uh, camera so it's better quality. But Clalopes uh, uh, asks, what can you do when you get a two month old puppy at Christmas time for him? not to feel overwhelmed. He's coming home with us, uh, he, he's coming with us to the Christmas parties, but should we let him meet the other dogs or people in the family or let him in the crate? Love this question, uh, primarily because this new dog that's coming into my life is gonna be coming into more than just my life. My family will be involved. And so there has been a question like, oh, can, can everybody come see the puppy? Can I come see the puppy? Uh, how does that work? So this is my, this is my suggestion. What are you looking, Bubby? Are you okay? Are you licking your paw? Did you hurt yourself? Did you hurt yourself? No? Did you get leftover treats? Uh, so here's my thing. When you bring a new dog, whether it's a new foster dog, a new adult dog that you adopt, senior, puppy, it doesn't matter. It's really important that you give them some time to decompress. Even if you go to a group, it doesn't matter what kind of dog you get. Um, they say that it takes a dog at least, get this guys, no matter the age, at least about six months to really be who they're going to be as a dog in your home when you first bring them home. Some dogs take up to a year. Hi, Bubby, you're gonna knock the laptop over. Come over here, come up here, come on bed. And so it's really important that you don't wanna coddle the dog or the new puppy. And what I mean by that is some people bring the dog home and they you know, baby it, they coddle it anytime they get scared, they overspoil it, they don't give routine or structure because they just wanna let the puppy adjust and they don't have friends or family over. My opinion is, yes, for the first probably five to seven days, you still want routine and structure in my opinion, but I don't think that it's, you know, I, I think in those five to seven days, you wanna keep the dog home and really start bonding with you. But I don't think that beyond that seven days that there's anything wrong with start having one friend or family member come over and for a short visit and just have it end on a positive note, then maybe a few days later have two people come over and so on and gradually work up. We definitely don't want to overwhelm the puppy. The most important thing for any new dog or any dog, like, guys, I see, a, excuse me, I see a bunch of questions here of how do I do this, what do I do that? One key tip that I can give you that works in most situations is really focus on ending whatever the scenario is that you're trying to work on with your dog in a positive note or on a positive note. So if you're going on a dog walk and your dog is struggling with pulling on leash, if you get a moment where the dog stops pulling on leash and they're doing really well, let's go ahead and end on that moment so that the last thing the dog remembers when they did whatever the activity was that you had them do was what you wanted them to do and you rewarded them for that. It's gonna help progress your training quite a bit. If your dog is really skittish and they seem to be a little bit more confident today when you show them whatever the vacuum cleaner let's go ahead and end on that note let's not continue to push it in my experience dogs do better when you gradually increase their exposure to things that make them nervous same thing goes for bringing friends and family over now obviously with uh covid and corona and all this stuff like you know be safe <laughs> but uh but yeah so that's that's my question uh that's my answer okay fm tunia 
All right, this is a long question. Hello, Rachel. I keep looking for help with my five-month-old golden doodle pup puppy. He was doing great with sleeping in the crate during the night and staying there uh, if he needs to since a week. He's, what? He was doing great with sleeping in the crate during a night and staying there if he needs to since a week he was crying so bad during waking up my kids and us too. If I will sit there, he will fall asleep. It's fine, but later on when he wakes up he is crying he's a crying concert that's funny and second issue is he's running away to tell people he's running away to all people do not react on me calling him and reacting to his name i do mention he listened when he is not just okay it basically sounds like they're having some crate issues and they're having some recall issues okay guys i'm more i'm making an in-depth video on this soon and i think i'm going to call it something like my number one tip if you only listen to any of my videos or something like that it's going to be a really big video uh in terms of the value i hope at least but i'm going to go ahead and tell you now because you're here and you're supporting me and i just want to give you the world and really the secret is with anything you're trying to do with your dog my what i have seen work wonders is the a word and the a word is attention getting their attention if you can get your dog's attention no matter the age and no matter the situation you will win and you will win as a partnership. Betten, come over here. They want to see you, my chocolate. Come on here, Betten. Good job. And what I mean by that is if you can get your dog to focus on you, even if there's a squirrel running across the street, then you have reached a level of, I won't even call it dog training, of just being a pet parent in the whole, most holistic and wholesome and powerful and strong way that it, that's, that's winning in my opinion. And one quick and easy way to be able to do that is before you give your dog anything of value, it may be their meal at dinner time, it may be even walking out the doorway if you're going from one room to the next or going out for a walk, they must make eye contact with you. And if you can encourage that, which all I do when I first start, start doing this with any of my dogs, foster dogs or whoever, is I just wait. I don't ask for anything in the beginning, I just wait and then when they make eye contact with me. That's when I give the YES. If you guys don't know what my yes marker command is, uh, just I'll link it down below after this video. Uh, but you get them to look at you and then by looking at you, they get whatever it is that they want. That is going to create this unstoppable partnership between you and your dog because they're going to associate anything positive with paying attention to you first. And so if you have problems with your puppy or dog not paying attention to you, or 164 watching Grace. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. Um, but if you are having issues with your dog paying attention to you for any reason, whether they're pulling on the leash, or they're not sitting, or they're barking, or they're chasing something, or they're jumping up, whatever it might be, if you can get them to focus on you, then you're gonna be able to solve those issues really quickly because then when you call them to you, they're gonna already have a very strong positive association with pain attention to you. So attention is the key. If you work on nothing else, work on getting their attention. And guys, you can even do, if you, okay, I made a video called, um, like the, the Netflix dog training hack or whatever. You guys can search it on YouTube, Netflix, Rachel Fasaro. I thought it would blow up and it did okay. Uh, but I think it's pretty incredible because really in that video, I talk about how you can train your dog while you're watching Netflix or Hulu or whatever it is you watch on TV and Finn, let's show them some of this. Come here, Finnegan. Up here. Up up. Come here. Come over here. So if your dog is sitting next to you or laying next to you and if you have, I have some treats here and they're looking at the treats or they're looking at the ground or they're focusing on the TV or the mirror or mirror, the, the window, once you, you just sit there and you wait for them to make eye contact with you. Oh, he did, but it was too quick. I like a little bit more than that. I put treats in my hand, which was a mistake. I should have just waited. Um, while we wait, I do have my Wildebeest uh, uh, treat pouch here. And I did do a giveaway. I'll be announcing that giveaway winner. I just was waiting to get in contact with the winner and making sure we got all the shipping stuff before I announced it. Um, but what I'm waiting here for is for him to give me eye contact. And you guys can be doing what I the whole point of bringing up that Netflix video is you guys can be doing this every time you watch TV. Don't passively watch TV, train and watch TV. It's like 
you know, I'm not even a big TV watcher, but with everybody being stuck at home lately, it's, it's a huge, it's something we do as a family sometimes, and <laughs> we'll wait for him and we'll keep going on. Yes, good boy. So I, I stopped talking. He... Yes, good job. You see his eyes kind of look up. Hopefully you guys saw that. And if you do that over and over and over again, sometimes I give treats, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I give three treats, sometimes I give one, and I vary up the treats, but that's gonna get him to be really excited to look at me. That's gonna be the most about, you could stop watching right now, please don't. But you could, and work on that and do nothing else, and you will increase your ability to do whatever it is you wanna do with your dog tenfold. So let's go on to the next Instagram question here. That was a really good one. Uh, Okay, so this next one is by Cocker Spaniel dot Boomer. Thank you so much for leaving a question. How to, why do you keep licking, Bubby? Do you guys ever have a dog that's licking something? Oh, there's nothing there. So there's a dog area near us that uses crushed uh, granite as the part of the ground. Finn doesn't know how to play fetch lightly. And I'm trying to play, I was trying to play the lightly. And he tore his paw pad a little bit. It's healed, but I think it's still a little bit raw. Oh, poor kid. We've been putting CBD oil on it. If you guys want to know, I use CBD Dog Health. Yes, CBD Dog Health is a CBD oil I use. There's no sponsorship or anything. I just really like them. I know the owners. Um, I've been putting a little bit on that. And it's healed up nicely, huh? Okay, so uh, Cocker Spaniel Boomer asks, how do you make your puppy walk with you, not behind you? Here you go, Bentley not pulling, not one second, not on the right one second to the left. My puppy's 12 weeks old, thank you so much. Okay guys, so leash walking is something you guys ask me about a lot. But the first, the first, I just spit, that's embarrassing. The first step of that is deciding what kind of leash walking do you want. So with Bentley, I was really like, I needed to have the perfect J, meaning that loose leash. I wanted him right behind me, I wanted it perfect. And we got to that point and it took a lot of work. Uh, and, and really, guys, this is also the answer to most of your questions. The way that we did that was we practiced and practiced and practiced. And any time he did the behavior I wanted, a.k.a. loose leash walking with me um, where I wanted him positioned, I just rewarded that with treats, play, or praise. A lot of times we think with dog training or behavior training that we need to reprimand or tell them no. Dogs don't understand yes or no. But they do under, dogs are opportunists. So they're gonna do whatever gets them the best opportunity. And for many dogs, they are either uh, food motivated or toy motivated or attention motivated. And so if they are doing something on their own and you reward them in the middle of doing it, that's how they're going to learn. That's how I taught Bentley. Now with Finn, he is, I still, he's almost 30 and I'm still working on leash stuff. And that's my fault. I take full ownership. I'm a crazy dog mom that's crazy busy and it's a lot of work. With him, I wanted to be a little bit more loose and that's probably some of my issue, but I made a choice to let him, I'm fine if he's like a half an inch in front of me or a half an inch behind me or a half an inch to the side. As long as he's not yanking on me and he's paying attention to me where I'm going and he's not barking at anything, I'm totally fine with it. No bite. Uh, so you guys have to make that decision. That's the, a leash walking step one is what kind of leash walking do you want? Do you want super strict like competition level or are you okay with a little bit more loosey goosey? The key is to reward them when they're doing whatever it is you want them to do and I missed a part. And that part is consistently. So being consistent is key. Don't let them pull during one walk and then the next walk not pull. Um, it's also important with leash walking guys that you're really, uh, what's the word? Purposeful, I guess is, that's not what I'm thinking, trying to say, but close enough. Intentional, that's the word I'm thinking of. You wanna be intentional with your walks because if you just go out willy-nilly and you're not really focused on it, they're not really gonna be focused on it. So I start. I recommend to start in your backyard or even your house if you're in an apartment like I am. Okay, uh, perfect. I'm gonna go then to 172 watching. Oh my goodness, guys, I'm so, I'm getting, I'm like sweating, I'm nervous. <laughs> These live videos are, are tough, but you guys seem to enjoy it. Uh, okay. Maya Flower, I made a comment on your revealing my new dog room video. Guys, I, okay, I was gonna make a video on this, but I didn't, but since you're watching, you get this insight. 
Did you know that we, like our little family, were featured on HGTV House Hunters? If not, uh, you can go, f I think you can still find our episode uh, on that last house that we bought and we have now recently sold. Uh, but I did a dog room tour reveal and that was one of the big reasons that HGTV wanted to film us was that room. So you guys can go find that in my video afterwards or I'll link it down. Uh, actually, I'll link it down below so after this video you can watch it. She asks, a video asking to show the closet in it and you said that if it reached 100 likes you'd make a video on it a while ago uh, and it got over 100 likes so where's the video oh my you guys are awesome you're holding me accountable so here's my video on that in that closet was a bunch of Halloween costumes uh, a bunch of props for videos most of which I've donated and are sold during this move because we moved halfway across the country I also had my stockpile of dog treats, which I've shown you guys in videos. I do have videos all in down below too, on, or I will, on um, my favorite dog treats and what I don't like in dog treats. Lately, I've really been digging the Vital Essential uh, Dried Minnows. You guys can find those at your independent local pet stores. If you really don't have a local pet store near you, Chewy.com has them. I'm a bigger fan of shop shopping locally, but we all got to do what we got to do, and a lot of time, a lot of times right now, you know, some pet stores are closed because of COVID, and I know that's a safety thing. So I think Chewy.com has them. It's called Vital Essentials Dried Minnows. They're little tiny fish. I don't have any on me right now. I have on me Canine Natural uh, Freeze Dried Tripe. You guys can look at the view here. You guys can see it here, uh, and as you can see, the boys love it. Can you touch the boy? Touch. Yes, good job, good job. Bentley, can you nose? Nose, good boy. So there are different commands for Finn, T-O-U-C-H is put your hand to my, your nose to my hand. For Ben, it's N-O-S-E. That way I can have a little differentiation. Okay, let's go to the uh, the next question. Eileen, Elian, we are getting a puppy in two weeks and we want to give her raw food. How can we make the transition from the diet she eats until now to her gut. Okay, you guys ask me on every single video and every single post about dog food, what I recommend, what I don't recommend. Can my dog get salmonella from eating raw food? I don't have their dog food bag in here. Finn, what do you like to eat for food? <laughs> I feed my dogs a biologically appropriate, complete and balanced raw diet. So what does that mean? Uh, it's, it's meat, it's raw meat. Come over here. It's raw crushed bone and raw organ. And it is all sourced responsibly in the US. I know some of you are like, oh, I'm vegan. Like I couldn't, I couldn't handle that. But you know, dogs are carnivores uh, and they need meat to survive, to, to thrive. And if you guys really look into it, I really, like, there's many of you here, most of you here watching this feed a kibble. Uh, if you watch, if you've watched me for more than a week, you know that I'm not an advocate of kibble, but I also don't judge you for feeding kibble because I fed Ben, uh, who's almost 11, kibble for half his life. And Finn had a little bit of kibble when he was a puppy, but for pretty much all his life, he's been a raw fed dog because that's when I learned about it and really saw the value and did a ton of research on my own. And now I'm a massive advocate of a raw food diet for dogs and cats for that matter. And the reason is, is that dogs were never meant, in my opinion, to eat a dry, processed, carb-rich food for their primary diet. And that's what every single kibble out there is. There is no kibble out there that is low in carb and completely biologically appropriate. It would be equivalent to you or I eating Cheerios for the rest of our life. Could we and, and survive and, and live? We probably could. Some Cheerios and a little milk. We probably could, uh, but we wouldn't be thriving. And so again, I fed kibble for a very long time, so I am in no seat to judge. I do encourage you because if you're watching this, you want to be the best parent you can, best pet parent you can, and I applaud you for that. And I want to be here with you as you go on your journey to learn more about at least adding fresh foods to your dog's diet. Because here's the thing, here's the thing. Fresh foods are powerful. And so you may really be interested in feeding a raw diet, but you don't know where to start. You're overwhelmed, it's really expensive. And you just like, I I'd rather do nothing. Here's the thing, in my opinion, raw food, even a little bit of it can go a long way. So I have a lot of pet parents that follow me that learned about raw food through me. And I'm so grateful that they let me know about it. And they're really just trying to do the best for their dog. 
And for those pet parents, what they'll do is they'll add a little bit of fresh food to their dog's kibble, be it some raw egg. And no, dogs are not going to get salmonella from that. There's not one single situation of a dog getting salmonella from a raw egg or raw dog food. Now, there are hundreds of thousands of cases of dogs getting salmonella from kibble that has been recalled, uh, chicken jerky treats that have been recalled, things of that nature that have been toxic, but not once from a raw egg or uh, raw dog food. And that's because dogs biologically, they have shorter digestive tracts, more, acidic in their, more acidity in their stomach. And so they were naturally meant to be able to handle any bad bacteria that may come up in a raw dog food. I mean, think about it. You see coyotes or wolves or even dogs on the side of the road eating uh, roadkill that's been sitting there for days and they're just fine. I'm sure many of you in watching this have had a dog in the backyard find a dead bird and then go eat it and nothing bad happened. Now, I don't recommend letting your dog eat dead birds because there could be other things going on there that you find in the backyard, but it's just, it's basically what has happened is if you research into how old kibble is, kibble's barely even 100 years old, but kibble's very, very new. So what are we saying, that dogs before kibble just didn't eat? No. They ate table scraps. They ate what you and I ate. They ate human food. And so what, you know, myself and other people that are either in the raw food industry or just advocates of raw dog food or have been feeding it for years and really see the benefits, what we're trying to do is just educate and show you guys that, and show the world, not just you guys, but show the world that dogs need real food just like you and I. So my big thing is go watch my videos. I have entire playlists and dozens of videos on what raw food is, how to transition. The quick and dirty of transitioning from like a kibble to a raw fresh food is slow and steady is my opinion. I recommend a transition over seven to 14 days, meaning you feed their bowl of kibble, take a little bit of kibble out, put a little bit of raw food in, uh, and then gradually increase the amount of raw food over time while decreasing the amount of kibble over time, where can you find raw fresh food? I recommend to go to your local independent pet store. Many of them are, are doing curbside or delivery if they're not open, not the pet co's or pet smarts. And when you go to these little independent pet stores, they're going to be working with small micro brands that are using human grade US uh, sourced responsibly raised animals. So you can know that it's probably better quality meat than you and I eat personally. And uh, if you still are hesitant on it, I just, like I said, I recommend you go watch all my videos. I'll link them all down below. And at minimum to consider adding some fresh food to your dog's diet. Um, like I said, raw eggs could be great. Canned sardines or even raw sardines, no salt, oil, nothing added. Just sardines are an excellent source of healthy fats and omega-3s that could work wonders for your dog and a whole food source. Uh, you could add some Greek yogurt, nothing added to the Greek yogurt. Uh, lightly steamed or pureed, lightly steamed vegetables would be awesome. You want to stay away from like onions, but even a tiny bit of garlic can do great for dogs. A little bit of avocado. A lot of people get mad at me for saying that, but there's been countless studies that dogs do just fine with a little bit of avocado. Just don't feed them the skin or the pit. Uh, or you could feed them some water, like water, fruit, like watermelons and peaches blueberries, things like that. So I'm a big advocate of uh, whole raw fresh food feeding. And I mean, Bentley is, you guys can't really see me there. There he is. Hi, Bentley. Uh, he's almost 11 years old. And you, I mean, I'm going to, I took them to the beach for the first time. I'm going to be uploading a video here soon showing you guys that. He galloped like a puppy and nobody believes that he's almost 11 years old. That's how, that's what raw food has done for him. So I do recommend that you guys uh, look into that. So, okay, I'm going to go to your comments, some of your comments here, because you guys are patiently, patiently asking me questions in the chat. So, um, and if anybody is doing any weird spam stuff, guys, call it to my attention. Last time we had some weird people, and I don't see that anytime here, but Apex, uh, I just got a German shepherd, so happy. I was wondering how long can be in a small area alone. Okay, I'm asked this a lot. How long can you leave your dog alone? And he, here's the thing, everything varies. A lot of people don't like my answer, but my honest answer and preference is that small dog, big dog, that you're not leaving them alone for more than about four to six hours at a time. Beyond that is just a little excessive. Now I get it, some people work uh, eight hour days and 
I've had people say, oh, so what you're saying is if you work full time, you can't have a dog. And I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if there is any possible way that you can have a friend, a family member, a neighbor, a pet sitter, a dog walker, uh, someone, to come, a, a, a co-worker to come check on your dog if you have a really long day at work or school um, in the middle of the day, that would be huge. Imagine if you had to be stuck up. I mean, I mean, we are. Like, I see all these memes of dogs looking at their humans like, well, now you know what it's like to be cooped up because we're all kind of sheltering in place. I don't know if you guys are... Sh are you comment here. Are you guys still sheltering in place where you are? Um, I'm in the U.S. and I've literally, other than making the move cross country, which is kind of extreme, I've been sheltering in place, very isolated. Oh my god. <laughs> A frame just fell. Oh my gosh. It's, a good, it's okay. It's okay. Come on. Let's lay down. This is a good real life example. Fitting in. Come lay down. There it is. Bentley, over here. Come here. Come in. So this is a good life example of what happens when your dogs get spooked. My heart is pounding. But what I did not do, I'm so glad that happened. A frame just fell, by the way. Bentley, over here. It's okay. Come on. Up. Oh, right here. Right here. It's okay. So a frame just fell and it startled them down. Yes, good boy. And my first instinct, I'm sure many of you was like, oh, I just want to hold them and say, it's okay, it's okay, it's just a frame. When your dogs get spooked by something, whether you're on a walk and a bicycle drives by or uh, something falls and it startles them, what I have found to be the best thing you can do to create a more confident and stable dog is just act like nothing happened. So if I wasn't filming this, I would have just walked away and just ignored it, like no big deal. And that's the, this spin is the result of that. How he kind of just looked, made sure, looked at me to make sure that I didn't need to be alarmed and then laid down. Ben is the example of a dog that when he was a puppy, because I didn't know better, you know, so like 10 years ago, I coddled him, and even right now, it's my instinct to go, oh, Ben, it's okay, like, but you don't wanna do that. You wanna just act like it's no big deal because your dogs are gonna look to you on how to react. Sometimes it's quick, but barely just look at you real quick, like, real quick. That's why it's really important that you guys pay attention to your body language and how you talk to dogs and how you react to things. Uh, so I'm glad you got to see that, but that was a little scary. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna go back to the comments. What is the best way to get poop and pee out of carpet? girl or boy i don't i didn't see your name um I, I don't know i have a if you use a little bit of water and uh, guys put in the comments here what's worked for you to get stains out honestly i don't know i just have some kind of carpet cleaner it's some natural one i don't it's packed in a box we haven't unpacked yet so i have to go find it uh but if you guys have any suggestions put that in here for for that person um my puppy is almost four months old awesome chantel what kind of oh that person. What kind of collars do you fin and then wear? Thank, thank you, Pilar or Pilar. I think I've seen you in here before. And Nathan, thank you so much for helping out. Okay, so there, okay, right now, Ben's collar, you know, I don't know the brand, but I'm gonna find out. Okay, so Ben's collar is, oh, here we go. A, a tail we could wag. Finnegan, over here. Uh, he also has his rabies tag and his micro, his, his uh, tag. And then we have his GPS collar here. I'm going to have um, a code linked for you guys down below. A video coming out on this Whistle GPS tracker. I've been trying it out for two weeks now. Anytime I recommend products to you guys, you please know that, first off, this video is not sponsored by anyone, but please know that it, it's, I use the heck out of things before I ever recommend or talk about a product, but this is their GPS tracker. Many people ask, is that a bark collar? Absolutely not. I am not an advocate of shocking my dogs or bark collars or things like that. Uh, Bentley is also wearing, I'm not gonna take it off because it's kind of hard, but can I see? Well, I can't really see it, but he's wearing an amber collar, just helps with his anxiety. And then I can't take fins off as easily. <laughs> You're such a good boy. Uh, but his is a dog plus bone. They are, they were local, local to Austin, but they've since moved to um, Colorado. But you can find them on, online. Go to their Instagram, tell them I sent you if you get one. 
and it, his is a martingale. Bentley's is a lay down. Uh, Bentley's is a flat collar, and Finn also has a GPS collar. Now, you guys know that Wildebeest, who makes the treat pouch that I'm using, is the only company I recommend hands down for treat pouches, treat pouches and harnesses. My latest video, I think it was my, no, my two videos ago or something, I talked about uh, Finnegan's harness that he uses, and it's Wildebeest the brand. Um, I have a discount coupon code. I'll link in the video down below so you guys can get that. Again, this video is not sponsored, but I I bought this treat pouch with my own money after lots of trial and, er trial and error, and I am obsessed. Go watch that video. You will be too. Okay. How do you feel about, oh, Metzl, how do you feel about putting a microchip in your dog? I am an advocate for it. However, please, if at all possible, with a puppy or a new dog, if you can get the microchip chip inserted when they're getting spayed or neutered or something like that. I volunteer at rescues and oftentimes, due to lack of resources and funding, it's not because they're bad or anything, they'll put the microchip in while the puppy's awake. And honestly, it's a big needle, I'm not gonna lie. And it was really hard for me to see. And I don't fault them because I mean, they're saving lives and it's, you know, it saves a lot of money to do it themselves. but. It is painful for the puppy. So anyways, I do recommend, um, I do recommend microchips because dogs get lost. I think the number is like 6 million dogs a year or something like that. It's crazy or 16 million get lost. So that's why I love the GPS whistle tracker. I'll have a code for you linked down below. And, uh, it, to me, it's, it's just a game changer. Um, okay. What is, oh my God, you guys have so many, 192 of you watching. Like I'm just, oh my gosh. Okay. Be sure, if you're watching this right now, you are watching this, so if you're enjoying this and if you've got learned anything from this channel, I'd love for you to click like on the video. It sounds silly, guys, but the reality is YouTube is a game of the algorithm and I want our community to grow so we can reach more people and connect with more like-minded people. I hope you guys connect with each other in the live chat. I've seen so many of you have... Um, relationships come out of the live chat because to me it's like our community is very like-minded so it's really important that you guys connect look at that we just got like 15 more likes thank you guys for doing that and if you're not subscribed the notification bell turned on do that it, it really it makes a big difference it may seem like a little click to you but it tells YouTube that you guys like what you're seeing so it means a lot okay a couple more questions you do 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 Venom, Tina, how do, oh my, I can't even, guys, I cannot even keep up with this. Rachel, can you give natural food tips on how to stop? I don't know what that was. And you're asking that question a lot. Theo, Theo and the bros, I, I don't know the answer to that. So I'll look it up for you. I'm happy to check it out, but I don't even know what that means. So we'll have to skip to the next one. Thanks for making sure I saw it. Uh, Rachel, what dogs do you have? So if you guys are new here, this is... Um, this is my puppy and puppy. He's not really a puppy. He's almost three years old. Oh guys. Okay. Real quick. Really important since you're all here, please comment. What crazy thing It has to be above and beyond. What crazy thing should I do to celebrate Finn's birthday? His birthday is this month in September. I'm going to go all out. I need your help. I have no idea what to do. I am obsessed. Amazed. No, I do not believe in e-callers. I believe in positive reinforcement. Uh, but I need, need, need ideas on what to do for his birthday. Like, we got to go all out. Please, please, please help me. Bentley's birthday is in December, so we've got a lot of planning to do. I'm behind. Any ideas you have, please comment them. And actually, if you would comment them on the main video, not even just the live chat, because I, I, can't, I can't keep up with it. There's so many of you. If you're watching the live chat, I can't even read them. They're going so fast. You guys, there's over 200 of you watching. Thank you so much. Like you, literally, you're gonna make me cry. I'm not even answering the questions because I'm like nervous. Okay, let's talk about. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go to the community tab on YouTube. If you guys um, ever see my post there, it's kind of like the Instagram or Facebook for YouTube, and answer some questions from there. So Mariana Manzana, hello Rachel and Co. By the way. That's really cool. Maybe that's what I should. I'm working on a logo. If any of you are graphic designers or really into graphic design, logo work, color work, uh, send me an email at rachel.fasaro at gmail. 
or DM me on Instagram. I'm really looking for someone to help me uh, really develop some cool graphics and logos and stuff. Rachel and Co is kind of cool. I don't know what you guys think, but she asks, Mariana asks, asks, what would be the right way to correct a dog when it's playing with other dogs, but sometimes displays a bad habit like mounting or being too pushy? <laughs> That's Finn. I feel like a babysitter since I could be right next to my one-year-old rescue Chewini when he's playing. Sometimes I feel like I'm a helicopter mom. What do I do to show him how to play nice with other dogs? Part of me is telling me that I'm doing something wrong. Thanks for all your fantastic videos. Mariana, thank you for asking that question because it's something I have a lot of experience with. Finnegan, is that, was that you? Is that you? Finn is what we and my friends that are dog trainers call the fun police because he wants to control everything around him. Finn has a very, uh, I hate to use the word submissive and dominant, for, but for lack of a better term, he has a very dominant alpha, I hate that term, but he has a very dominant alpha personality. He wants to control everything and it just comes from, honestly, his own insecurities. Before we adopted him at almost four, four and a half months old, he went through three different families. So he went through a lot of uh, stress and uncertainty in his younger years, which is when dogs have their fastest mental uh, and physical development. And so what happens to them in that time frame makes a massive difference. And so that really set him up for not success and failure really, but he's not failing. So anyways, he, Okay, plea, I'm gonna have to ask you guys to not, I see your questions come through, I'll try to answer them, but when you spam a bunch of questions, it, it really makes it hard for other people to connect. But anyways, um, with Finn, he will try to keep anybody from having too much fun. So here's my answer to those of you who have dogs like mine or Mariana's. Um, dog park situations or group settings may not be the right way for them because it was a hard thing for me to learn with Finn because I wanted to do a lot of play dates, but I had to only, I have to limit my play dates with Finn, with people that have, with experienced dog owners and with dogs that I know and dogs who aren't of the same personality because otherwise it can get a little intense and he's not aggressive at all. Finn is just a big love bug, but he just wants to make sure everybody's safe, everybody's calm, he wants everybody around to just be chill and when they're not, he gets, he'll just start chasing or barking. And so my recommendation is to not allow the behavior by redirecting. And that goes for any question you guys are asking. Uh, Plea, you're asking, how do I get my dog to stop attacking me? Thank you for asking the question. I'm very excited with your, uh, I, I'm uh, pleased with your excitement. Don't reward the behavior and redirect and reward when they're doing what you want them to do. So with Finn, if he's starting to get a little annoying to other dogs, like chasing and barking inappropriately, I redirect, we work on that. Finny and touch. Yes, we work on the touch command. No, good boy. And get him to come to me. You practice it enough because in the beginning we talked about attention and how important getting attention is. If you can get their attention while they're chasing and barking at another dog to then come to you, reward. And then they learn, okay, instead of going and chasing and doing something annoying to this other dog, I get a treat if I pay attention to mom or dad. Okay, some questions here. Polar bear, the great year to what is the best year to get guys stop spamming i'm doing my best polar bear the best year or best time to get a dog is when you have the time to take at least if possible at least the first week off completely from work or school when you get that dog home if you can't do it it's okay <laughs> don't freak out but ideally the time of year doesn't matter so much in my opinion as it does matter of you, it, it, what matters most in my opinion is that you have the ability to take care of your dog and train your dog and have time for the dog. And if you have more time during your winter break to really get them established, even though it's freezing cold, then go get a kiddie pool, put some sod in it, have them go potty in the garage in the sod if it's too icy cold outside because you live in wherever, East Coast, in the US, and spend time with that dog. I mean, that's, that's just my opinion. Some more questions here. Uh, Sophie, thank you for being here. Lola, thank you for being here. Zen, thank you for being here. Maddie, Rachel, do you recommend dog ins insurance? My friends recommend it. Some say it's a waste. Okay, guys, if you have not seen my dog insurance video, can somebody paste it here? If you've watched it, uh, I recently did a video. It is called, hold on, I do not remember off the top of my head because, you know, I'm, 
I'm, uh, I'm like that. Um, what is it? My dog. Oh, no. Why every, okay. So the video is called why every dog needs this. Please watch. It was posted about four weeks ago. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six videos back. It's called seven videos back, something like that. But it's why every dog needs this. Please go watch that video. It's an entire video talking about uh, pet insurance. It's what I recommend. It's what I use for my boys. I put a lot of time in that video. It did very, very well. But the short of it is, yes, I do recommend pet insurance. Uh, this new dog that's coming into my life very soon is a puppy. It's very young. And this puppy already has pet insurance and it's not even in my family's possession at this point. Uh, so yes, I do recommend pet insurance. I, my uh, Finn uses Trepanion. Um, okay, a couple more questions and I think we're getting up. Okay, we're, oh my goodness. I was gonna do 30 minutes and it's been almost 45 minutes. Uh, okay, so if you guys have not liked this video and you're watching it and you're enjoying it and having fun, first off, you don't have to do anything. You just do being here. It means more than I could ever say. I say that a lot, but I'm gonna continue saying it. But I would love it if you would also click like on the video. It just helps with the algorithm. Clicking subscribe and turn the notifications on. It makes a world of difference in YouTube world. And guys, we are almost at 100K subscribers on this channel. Like you and I, I'm starting to get teary-eyed, are almost at 100,000 subscribers. I think, they, I think the statistics on YouTube are 1% 1 or 5% or something of creators actually hit that milestone and we are almost there. I'm hoping to hit it this month in September, which is the birth month of Finnegan. And I like, it's just, it's insane to me. Like we're gonna do this together. We're gonna save all the damn dogs together. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna answer one more question. Uh, okay, Begonia. Hi, Rachel. I got addicted to your channel. Thank you. My boyfriend and I will get a puppy. Oh, gosh. See, you guys are having so many comments, which I love, but I can't. Okay, my boyfriend and I will get a puppy together this Christmas. Do you have any advice for pet parents that will work full-time besides crate training? Yes. So, uh, thank you, Plea. I appreciate that. Uh, yes, so working full time does not mean you can't have a dog, but it does mean you're going to have to give up some of your free time to give that dog their best life. Can you wake up in the morning, let your dog go pee, put him in the crate, go to work all day, come home, and the dog could live? Yeah, but you don't want that. You want your dog to thrive. And I know that because you're here, you're in this community, and that's just who we are. So what I recommend for people who work full time, if at all possible, and I know this isn't always possible, try to get somebody a neighbor, a friend, a co-worker, a, um, a dog walker, somebody to come let your dog out at lunchtime or even you if you can work to work out to come home at lunchtime and let your dog out. That would be a massive thing. I recommend to exercise the dog before work, during lunch, and after work. If, at, if you have no ability to come home in the middle of the day, then I would make sure that the, work, the working sessions are both mental and physical, physically stimulating before work and after work. And I would actually do two sessions after work. One, when you right get home, then you chill, relax, maybe feed dinner or whatever you wanna do. And then before bed, I would do another exercise session. I would spend the weekends giving three exercise sessions. And by exercise, I mean brain games, which just search my name, brain games, and I give you just a list of them, play by play, really easy like brain games you can do in the winter, in the summer, when it's raining, indoor, outdoor, door easy stuff you can do. Honestly, guys, like this is a huge thing. A lot of people think to exercise their dog, they need to go run their dog or play fetch. And those things are important, but that's not the thing that necessarily tires them out the most. Things that tire out your dog quick is working their brain, working on basic sits, down, stays. I have a video called How to Tire Your Dog Out in 15 Minutes. Again, search my name for that. I'll link it below. It's one of my more popular videos because it, it literally is just a combination of light physical exercise mixed with a lot of mental stimulation of easy activities and it tires the most active hyperactive dog aka one like this one so fast because working your dog's mind tires them out twice as fast as something physical like going on a run also when you do go on a walk let your dog sniff i don't mean pull you every which way but take your dog a different route and let them smell dogs using their nose tires them out more than you could ever 
no. And also guys, especially if your dog is kind of cooped up throughout the day, uh, I do recommend a pet cube uh, camera. I do, I'll have links on those below. I've done many videos on them. I, I do work with them sometimes, I'm not right now, but I love their product because then you can check on your dog, but also give your dogs new opportunities. On the weekends, go find a new trail you can walk if, if you're allowed to safely in your area with everything going on. Go on a new route in your neighborhood. Just drive to a different neighborhood and walk. If you are if you have to stay indoors, just try new brain games to just give them new things to enrich their life. Uh, oh my gosh, somebody just put a, a super chat on here, Samantha. Thank you, so, guys, you do not need to send me money, but thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It 100% goes back to the dogs and our mission here. Hands down, that's where it goes, and I appreciate you more, more than you know. Uh, but Samantha asks, how to get your dog to stop crying at night when they're in the crate? Okay, you guys know that I always say that with crate training, and this goes to the same if you have a dog, maybe you're not crate trained, but you have a dog who whines when you leave them at home alone. You need to make their crate and the area that their crate is in or wherever you leave your dog Disneyland. And the way that you do that is have a hundred situations where your dog has a positive association while being in the crate. And what I mean by that is you need to, at least a hundred different times and scenarios, give your dog an opportunity to have a positive outcome being in and around that crate. Whether it be you feed them a meal in there, whether it be you give them a Kong with their food in there that's frozen, if it's a kibble, just put some raw goat milk in there, put it on its side, put it in the freezer, let them work on it, supervised, you could be right next to them. Uh, do brain games, have your, if you have kids and they're in the crate, drop treats from around the crate, and you can even, even start with having the crate by your bed at night so they get used to being in the crate next to you, and then inch by inch over a week or two, move the crate further away from you. Because there's not, in my experience, and I've crate trained dozens and dozens of dogs, there's, there's no quick like, uh, quick way to go tap on the crate or take the crate or, or yell at them or let them cry it out a uh, tool that'll make them comfortable with their crate other than making them comfortable with the crate. So you've got to put those sweat equity in. And that's why crate training is one of my, it's the number one, one of the, either number one or one of the most, one of the top video uh, topics that trend on my channel because so many people struggle with crate training and that's because it does take sweat equity. Uh, but if you do it in, in the way that I talk about videos, I do recommend to watch my videos uh, for that, my crate training videos because I go into the specifics on how to do that. But the way to get your dog to stop crying in there is simply turn it into Disneyland. Get them to love it. Take the crate, put it in the living room with, with, living room with you guys while you're watching Netflix on TV and Anytime they go in or near that crate, you reward the heck out of it. Give them treats, give them toys, play a little, be careful, I've done this with Finn and he got almost like hit his foot on it. But when he was younger, I played a little toss into the fetch because he's very ball motivated. So he'd throw the ball in the crate and he'd bring it back, throw the ball in the crate and he'd bring it back and he loved it. Another trick is if your dog is like super freaked out by the crate, have the crate folded up. I have a video called like crazy ways to get your dog to be crate trained. Have the crate folded up flat and just have them get used to get, have them get used to that in the room first, then start opening it up and let them see it. And that just really helps dogs calm down. Um, sometimes also get using, if it's a small dog, and this is kind of up to your discretion, you can get a play pen, keep the crate open, have a play pen in the beginning stages, uh, kind of attached to it, you could use zip ties that's open on the top. Some dogs like the ability, ability to go in and out. It makes them feel a little bit less confined and a little bit less anxious. So that's another thing you could do. But the best thing you can do is give them a positive uh, experiences in and around that crate that end in um, positive, uh, positive affirmations and positive experiences. Again, brain games is the best way to do that. I hope that really helps you, Samantha. And thank you so much uh, for, for giving the dollar. So, okay guys, I'm, I, oh my gosh. Okay. So this is what I do. I do want to talk a little bit more about crate training. So, uh, for those of you watching the replay and click the video linked right here. And then I'm going to talk about the dog treats and dog treats that I don't recommend and click the video right here. Thank you guys so damn much for being here. I have so many new videos coming up very quickly. Uh, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe button. And I hope you had a beautiful day. Goodbye. Bye guys. Thank you so much.
Oh my goodness. I don't know how to end this.